Today, I'm going to show you how you can style a health bar in Phaser 3 to look like the health bar from games like Legend of Zelda. So in this example here, if you go ahead and click on the screen, this is going to simulate that the player is taking damage, and so you'll see the health bar is animated, and it will animate to show that you're losing health. So to get started, I've provided a starter project template. In the description of this video, there'll be a link to a direct download. So after you downloaded the starter code template, we'll go ahead and open that in your ID of choice. I'll be using VS Code. So in the project, uh, the two main files we want to take a look at is the index.html file and the main.ts. So the index.html file is just a basic HTML file that goes ahead and references our main.ts file. And it just has some boilerplate for adding some minor CSS styling uh, to our example. So the first thing we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And we're going to want to install our project dependencies. So I'm using Yarn, so I'm doing Yarn install. If you're using the NPM package manager, you can just do NPM install. And this will also install the required dependencies. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and run Yarn start to go ahead and use Vite to load up my dev server. This is going to expose a dev server in port 3000. Uh, so if you're using NPM, you just do NPM run start, and that'll also start the dev server. And this is going to go ahead and open up our uh, basic template here. Uh, so for this example, I'm using phaser 3.55.2. All right, so if we go ahead and come back to our code, let's go ahead and take a look at the main.ts file. Uh, so in our main.ts file, we have the basic configuration for a phaser game. Uh, so all the code we'll be adding will be in our uh, game class here, which just extends the phaser scene. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and load in the assets that we're going to be using. Uh, so in the public assets images folder, there is a hearts PNG, uh, very small, but this is a sprite sheet that we'll be using for this uh, example. So to go ahead and load in our sprite sheet, we'll want to do this dot load dot sprite sheet. And then we'll want to go ahead and provide the asset key for our example. Uh, so I'm just going to make a new variable up here. Let's do const asset key. And I'm going to set it equal to a string called asset key. Uh, so typically, I like to make these const variables uh, since we typically reference this value in other spots in our code. So it makes it easier to only have to update that value in one spot. Next, we need to provide the path to our image, our sprite sheet. So we're going to do assets. We're going to do images and then heart.png. And then finally, for our sprite sheet, we need to provide our frame width and height. So it's going to be seven pixels by seven pixels. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and create a heart and just render that to our scene. Uh, so down in our create method, what we'll do is we're going to do this dot add dot sprite. And so we're going to use sprites because we actually want to animate these, uh, so we don't want to use an image. So for our sprite, we're going to go ahead and place this to location 10, 10. For our texture, we're going to go ahead and reference our asset key variable. And then for our frame, we're going to start with zero. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and set the scale to make this a little bit bigger. Um, we're just going to go ahead and multiply it by eight. And then we're going to go ahead and set our origin to zero. So if we go ahead and save, let's go ahead and make our game a little bit bigger. We'll see that our heart is being rendered to our scene. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create two animations for our heart. So if we go ahead and take a look at our heart PNG, we'll have our first animation is when the player takes their first hit, we'll go from a full heart to a half heart, and then our second animation will be from the half heart to an empty heart. So to do that, we're going to create another variable to hold our animation names. So I'm just going to call this const. We'll do health animations, and we're going to set this to an object. And we'll do lose first half. We'll just set that to the same name for now. We'll do lose second half. And same thing. Let's do as const. All right, so the next down in our create method, this is where we create our animations. So we're going to do this.anims.create. And here, for our configuration, we need to provide the key. So this will be the animation key name. So this is how we can reference our animation. So this is going to be our health animations dot lose first half. 
Then we need to provide the frames that are going to make up this animation. So we'll have frames. We'll do this dot anims dot generate frame names. And we'll provide our asset key. So this is the sprite sheet that we're referencing. And then we're going to provide the start and end frames that will make up these frame names. Um, so Phaser will go ahead and generate these for us based on our spray sheets. We'll have start. We'll start at 0 for our first frame. We're going to end at 2. So we're going to have 3 frames. And then finally we're going to go ahead and set our uh, frame rate. So if we want to use a different frame rate, we can go ahead and specify that here. Um, and so because it's a very small animation, we want to make this a little bit slower. Uh, so we're just going to use 10. The next, what we'll want to do is I'm just going to copy that. We're going to change this to lose second half. And then we need to change our start to 2. And we're going to go ahead and end on 4. All right, so if we go ahead and save, what we can do next is go ahead and test out our animation by trying to play it. So if we come down here, I'm just going to... Go ahead and do play. And then we need to reference our animation that we want to play. So I'm going to do health animations, and we'll do lose first half. Go ahead and save. Let's make this a little bit bigger. If we refresh, we'll see as soon as our scene starts, it, we go ahead and lose part of our heart. So as an example, if I take away this frame right here, it's going to go ahead and play at the default frame rate, and so you'll see it's very fast. So that's why we slowed it down to 10. So one small correction, we actually want to use the generate frame numbers method instead of the generate frame names method. So the generate frame names is meant to be used with texture atlases, and when you're just loading your frames and creating them from a sprite sheet, it is recommended to use the generate frame numbers. All right, so now that we have all those pieces together, what we need to do now is just create a simple uh, health variable to track our total health, and then actually create a health bar that represents that total health, and as we lose health, we need to modify that. All right, so to track our health, what we'll do is just make a new variable. We'll do let health equal six. Then what we're gonna do is calculate the number of hearts we need to display on our screen. So for our health, we're gonna treat one heart equal to two health, where the full heart will be equal to two, and if it's at half, it'll be equal to one. So we're gonna go ahead and wanna create a number of hearts based on that. So we'll do const number of hearts. We're gonna set this equal to math.round, and we'll do our health, and we'll divide by two. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and create a sprite for each of these number of hearts. So to do that, we're just going to do a simple for loop. We'll do let i equal 0. We'll do i is less than our number of hearts. And then we'll go ahead and increment. And we'll go ahead and just place this creation logic inside our for loop. But what we'll want to do is we're going to want to move... But then what we'll want to do is actually update the location of each uh, heart. So let's go ahead and get rid of our animation. Then for our location, we'll go ahead and do 10, and we'll add a number of pixels based on which heart this is. So we're going to use i, and we're going to multiply this by 63. Uh, so this is because we're scaling our uh, sprites, and we want to leave some padding between each of the sprites. And then we'll go ahead and keep them at 10 pixels. So if we go ahead and save... If we go ahead and take a look at our game, we'll see now we have three hearts. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to listen for click events on our scene so that in that way we can play our animation. So to do that, we're just going to do this dot input on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to listen for a phaser uh, pointer down event. So we'll do phaser dot input dot events. And we're going to do pointer down. Then, when this event happens, we'll have our callback function, so this will be, will be invoked. All right, so then what we're going to want to do in this callback is we're going to want to go ahead and update our health total, so we'll subtract one from it. We're going to want to go ahead and get a reference to one of our sprites, so then that way we can play the appropriate animation. So, what we'll do first is we'll just do health, we'll do minus equals one, change that back to a let. So then what we'll need to do is we'll need a way to reference our sprites. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an array and just add them to that array. So up here we'll do const hearts will equal an empty array. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll just type our array real quick. We're going to do phaser dot game objects and we're going to do a sprite array. Then we'll assign this to a variable called heart. And then we're just going to go ahead and add heart to our hearts array. So we'll do hearts push heart. All right, so what we want to do next is we want to get the index of the heart that we want to play our animation for. So to do that, we'll just make a new variable. We're just going to call this heart index. We're going to set equal to math dot round, and we're going to take our health divided by two. And we'll subtract one. So what we're doing here is we're taking our total health, we're dividing it by two because that's how many hearts we have. Um, we're going to go ahead and round, so then that way we're always running up to the next integer. So when we have one health, this be value will be one. If we have six, uh, this will end up being three. And because we need to access our index of our array, it starts at zero, so we need to subtract one to make sure we stay within the bounds of our array. So now that we have our index, the next thing we need to do is know if our heart is at a full heart or if it's a half heart. And we can do that by making a new variable. We'll do is half heart. And we'll set the sequel to our health. And we'll do percent two. And we'll set that is it equal to one. So what we're doing here is we're taking our health value and we're checking if the remainder when we divide by two is equal to one. So if it is equal to one, then we know that we've already taken a damage and we're at a half heart for that index. If there is no remainder, so if it's equal to zero, that means we're at a full heart instance or we have no health left. So to play our animations, we can just then do if it's a is half heart, we'll play one animation. Otherwise, we're going to play a different animation. So we'll go ahead and reference our hearts array. We'll use our hearts index to access the sprite game object that we want to grab reference to. We'll go ahead and call our play method, and now we just need to pass in the name of the animation. So we'll do health animations, and we're going to do lose second half if we're at half heart. Otherwise, we want to play through that first animation. So we'll do lose first half. All right, so we go ahead and save, and if we click on our scene, we'll see that our health bar is now animated when we lose a health. So one last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and just add a check that if we're at zero health, we'll go ahead and just exit out early. So if health is equal to zero, we'll just return and we won't actually do any of the code below. With that, we now have a health bar that is styled to look like a health bar from games like Legend of Zelda. In future videos, we'll look to see how we can extend this example to actually have a health bar component uh, that uses events and lives in a different scene um, so that we can actually treat it like a UI component. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you're interested in more great Phaser 3 content, make sure to go ahead and click on one of the links that are showing on your screen.